Hi, my name is Pierre from Blinky Sequences. In today's video, I want to show you how to set up moving heads and X lights. The ones I'll be setting up are the brand new 380 watt Mini Beam Pro from Wally's Lights. I'll put a link in the description below to those. So let's jump into X lights and get started. Okay, so here we are in X lights. I've switched to a brand new folder and I've added a single controller on the controllers tab. This controller is a F16V3 and the idea will be to run the moving heads from this controller. So I'm going to switch to the layout tab, um, select 3D. Um, it's not needed, but if you are using moving heads, I'm guessing you have a 3D layout. We click DMX, moving head advanced, and we'll drag this on. I'm going to name this moving head one. We don't need to save that. These heads have 16 channels and you'll be able to go to Wally's website and find a reference guide for what each of these channels are. So it will look something like this where channel 1 is pan, 2 is tilt. And then there will be some more like 9 is color and then we'll be in that more an advanced section where you can see 9 and these are the values you would need to get certain colors. So I'm just going to move that to the side. So let's set up this moving head. So we're going to start with the pan. Our coarse channel is channel one. Our fine channel is channel three. The range of motion is 540. That's correct. Orient to zero. So this is when you switch on the light, which direction is it facing at rest? So I'm going to be pointing my heads to the right just like it is over there so I don't need to change this but if there's a reason you want to maybe have the head pointing backwards when it starts you can say 90 degrees and then that's where your head will start so I'll leave mine on zero so I know these heads move counterclockwise so to get from my zero position to the forward position it'll have to go all the way around so that's 270 degrees so we'll move Orient forward to 270. We'll leave the slew limit alone for the moment. And reverse, I'm going to check because we're going counterclockwise. The slew limit doesn't actually affect the moving head. It only affects what you see in X lights and the preview. So if you make the zero and you say go from the right to the left, it'll just snap. So you would need to set this so you can get a more realistic feel for what the heads are going to be doing. And this is the pan done, so we'll go to tilt. The coarse channel is channel 2. The fine channel is 4. The range of motion on these heads are 270. So orient 0, so when you switch on the lights, they are not horizontal like you see there. So they are pointing more downwards. So it's if you can think about it, the range of motion is 270 and you get the 180 horizontal line, which means you still got 90 left after the, after that. So if it's divided equally, you get 45 degree angles. So our orient to zero is 45. And then to get back to orient to up, you would have to go 45 back to get to horizontal and then a 90 to get on top. So this will be 135 to point up. Again, we'll leave the slew limit alone, 180 should be good enough. And color properties. The color properties, the, this has got a color wheel. The color wheel channel is channel nine. The dimmer channel, we don't have to set in the color properties. You can set this. This is for when you want to use the color wheel in the new moving head advanced, uh, like moving head effect. There's a color wheel tab where you can pick the colors. And if you set this dimmer channel, if you if you pick a color, it'll it'll set the dimmer to be on. And I don't want that. The color wheel size. So from the manual, I can see that it's 14. And you can actually expand this color wheel size and you can set all the individual colors. So I'm going to do that now and I'll speed up the video a little bit.
Okay, so there we go. We got all the colors set up. So you can just pause there if you need these colors. But there will be an X model available on this as well. So now we've done the, the color properties. Now we'll do the dimmer. The dimmer channel was channel 8. The shutter channel we have as 7. I'm just going to put a value of 125 on there. Uh, we don't need to mess with the beam, base, yoke, or head mesh properties. Controller, we don't have any controller set up yet. I'm just going to leave it as no controller. Strand node names, this is the other one we want to do. You click this dots, and now because there's 16 channels, we should be able to set these. And you can hit generate node names, and what this would do is it would go back to the ones we've set and pre fill these files. And we can just continue on and do the rest of them. So I'm going to do that now. There we go. So now we got all the names set up. Click OK. Controller connection. I'll leave this like that. The protocol, I'm just going to set to DMX. And save. And that is the very first one we've done. And this is looking correct to me. So I'm going to copy and paste this f four times. I'll move moving head four. Maybe we'll move it a bit on. I'm going to select all of them, right click, distribute horizontally. So we can just have them looking good. I'll also be adding all of these into a group. So I'm going to select all of these, right click, Create a group from selections. I'm going to call these moving heads, or moving head group. Save. And the final thing we need to do is on moving head one, ensure that our fixture says moving head one. And when we come to moving head two, we set the fixture to moving head two, and so on. So we'll do the same for three and for four and save that and that is it so that's all we need to set up the moving heads so now what we'll do is we'll do the the single line shadow models so the reason we do this is most most of the existing sequences out there would use this method of sequencing so they will use DMX effects not only on the moving head but on the shadow models and it makes it easier to do a few effects so many so many of them that you're going to import will use this so we're going to set this up now by adding a single line and we will call this moving head image pan so we'll do one for the pan for the tilt um, we don't need one for everything so like pan fine and tilt fine we don't need those so we'll set image pan the number of strings is the number of moving heads you have so in this case we have four nodes per string that's one um, a very important thing you want to set is on the string properties you want to change the rgb nodes to be single color and then we're going to go to set the controller to use star channel and we're going to select this individual star channels and then we can see we got the four strings and these will represent our moving heads so the first one we will click this box and then we will change this to say start of model and you can select from the drop down moving head one two three and four so we'll select one and click ok so what this is you can see there by the, the colon there the first part is the actual head and the second part is the channel so in our case the pan channel was number one 
and because we are doing MHPAN, all of them will be one. So we will copy and paste that for like over there. So this will be moving head one, this will be moving head number two, this will be moving head number three, and this will be moving head number four. And that's all you need. Um, I like to go a little bit further and go st strand and node names and give these four a name MH1, MH2, MH3, and MH4. We can also change the appearance because we're going to see these so these are pretty small so what we're going to do is we're going to change the appearance and I'm going to up this to about 10 and that'll that'll be good so that's the pan done so what this is doing is when we set an on value or DMX value on these single lines they are shadow models of the moving heads on the same channel. So if we set something on this pan on the single line, it'll affect the head this pan. So I'm just going to save that. So what we're going to do is we're going to be creating this for quite a few of them. So I'm going to be copy and pasting this a few times now. So I'm going to copy paste. So there's a tilt, there's the frost, the shadow, the dimmer, the color, the gobo, the focus, the prism. So we'll have a few of these now, so I'm just going to start naming them. So, tilt. No. MH. Let's say frost. Um, and I'll go through all of these now and do those. I'm j I'll just show you the tilt and then I'll pause the video and quickly do all of them. And then we'll come back to them. So with the tilt we'll do four strings. So it's it's easy to just go back to MH pan, which we know is correct, and we just copy one of these these values from the strings. So we go back to tilt. We select no controller, so you use star channel, individual star channels, and you can just paste the same one over there a few times. And what we want is the pan channel or the tilt channel was channel two. So what we'll do is we'll change this last number to two on all of them. So these are all tilts. And then we'll, this is moving in one. We'll change this one to number two. Then one to three. And then one to four. So I'll go ahead and do this on all of them. Okay, so I've set up all the single lines. So you can see I've got MH colors is all mapped to channel nine across one, two, three, four, the moving heads. The dimmer is on eight and I went through all of them. I've also kind of spaced them how I would like them. So this is, you kind of learn where you want things. So I've got my, my um, dimmer and shadow right at the bottom and I just changed the appearance. So the appearance is on this one. 50 in a blended circle. I've made the pan and the tilt right on top. One is a circle, one is a, a square. The second one is color, and then I just have the others just over here, so I can just see them. So when we go to a sequence, for instance, when we put a DMX effect, and it's on moving head one, and we, let's say, up the dimmer, you can see over moving head one, we got the red coming on for the dimmer. And as you see, as we slide it, it comes in. So we can do that and the shutter. And now we will see a beam, and I, I would know the slide is going to be on. Like sometimes, if you put off, if you put this on, let's say we go, let's move the tilt up so we can shine into the air. So we should see that the tilt is coming there, and let's say we pan it around. So the, these colors are really useful, so you know what when things are happening. And then also when people are sequencing them, they might actually, let's put this on on the group level, per model default, so they are all going like this. But we'll take away, let's say, we'll take away the, the dimmer, and we 
kind of want them to come on one by one and then kind of fade away. So if you think about it on a single line, you would just do this using a, a bars effect. So on the bars effect, you drop on the, on the single line, which is just a shadow model. And we will set this to be going to the right. 3D. And then maybe we want to have it go around about four times. Let's make it fast. Let's make it eight. Let's make it eight. So you can kind of see there. They go they go on and then they kind of dim as the as the single line goes through. So you can actually look at the single lines, what the bars effect is actually doing. And we can do this pretty easily going if you go into you double click on the pan, double click on the strand, you can actually see what's being set on this. So if we take the the pan down, this is becoming dimmer. But now we can also take a DMX effect and put it on the pan. Single line. And you'll have MH1234. So you can actually set the pan values on all your heads using one effect. And you don't have to put it on four of them. And that is kind of why the old style of using DMX and using the, the shadow models are useful. And you would probably want this anyway for mapping in vendor sequences. If you're going on the new way of sequencing, you would drop a moving head effect. And you can drop it on the moving head or on the group. If we drop it on the group, you can say all, and you can just point them. You can see how they're moving. You just point them where you want them to be, and x Lights would figure out what commands and what values to send to get them to that position. So if we do this, Let's put it, I'm just going to drag an uh, on effect onto my single line shutter. Copy that onto the dimmer. So that's, that looks pretty good. And then we can fan out the... We can make them fan. So now they... Oh, let's do this. Click all. Click fan. Oh, let's make it go from... So they will kind of move out. They'll kind of fan. And that's it for setting up moving heads in X-Lights. I hope you found this video useful and it helped you out. Um, consider liking and subscribing to my channel. Um, I plan on doing a video on sequencing moving heads. And if you like and subscribe, you can get notified on that. See you in the next one.